What's up YouTube? I'm Trent Weldon. Welcome back to the channel Weldon Aquatics. In today's video, I want to go through actually what an RO unit is. Uh, this is going to be stemming from one of my previous videos where we actually installed the RO unit and ran the water source supply line. Uh, the first thing first, I did change how I was actually mounting the RO unit. Uh, I took a piece of 2x4 and located the studs behind my drywall and you know it screwed the 2x4 directly into the stud that way I can hang the RO unit from that piece of 2x4 instead of just drywall so it's much more secure fitting I could have put the 2x4 across three studs uh, but with what I needed and the space I needed I utilized two studs but to get into what an RO unit is uh, what you see me doing here is actually changing out the RO membrane. Uh, this is, in, in essence, think of an RO unit as a multi-stage filter to create and filter the most pure water that you can basically start with. Uh, you can expand these RO, RO units out to seven plus stages of filtration. And the reason that we're going to use this massive filtration unit is for our salt water tank we're going to be doing again. You wanna start out with the, the best water you can. Uh, this is gonna help with algae issues uh, because what we're going to be filtering out is what is called TDS. You know, it's a, it's a total dissolved solid. So think about it as how much crap is in your water. We're gonna filter all of that out. You know, we're gonna filter out sediments, we're gonna filter out ammonia, um, we're gonna filter out chloramine, chloramines, you know, everything based upon this, and then we're gonna run it through some DI resin, so we're gonna deionize the water, so we're, we're stripping the water of everything that we can. Uh, fortunately, my new water in my new house is, is actually a less TDS than what I previously had, I'm still very high pH, I'm still, you know, all of that liquid rock basically. But with this RO unit, I don't have to worry about any of the TDS, that total dissolved solid coming through and potentially causing algae issues in my aquarium. You know, it's, bas it's basic nutrients we're trying to get rid of. So I previously started with the basic four stage RO unit from Bulk Reef Supply. <clears throat> if you're in the market for an RO unit, I highly, highly recommend Bulk Reef Supply. They come pre-put together, it's very plug and play, it's very simple to install, it's very easy to follow, uh, and I mean, these units can be tapped into underneath your sink and stowed away for when you don't need it. Uh, what I am doing here though is I am actually expanding the amount of filtration that I'm going to have with my RO unit. So I added a second membrane, the RO membrane, and that what that is going to do is going to allow me to generate 150 gallons per day versus the original 75 gallons per day. I'm also adding two extra canisters. As you can see me installing here. And that's gonna add two additional layers of filtration, if you wanna call it. So, you know, extra, extra filtration on this. Uh, the RO unit, as it's going to process water, you are going to generate your RO water, which is the beneficial water that we are going to use, and then you're gonna produce a wastewater. Uh, the wastewater, most people will put it down uh, floor drain, which is I'm going to be doing now. A lot of people will run it to the uh, back of a toilet, your washing machine. You know, there, There's other ways you can use it. It's not necessarily bad water. It's just filtering out all the junk that you don't want in your saltwater tank that's potentially going to give you issues. Um, in the past, I've actually used the wastewater, as it's called, for water changes on my freshwater fish tanks. Um, I will link a, a description, the, a link, I'll put the video in a link in the description below uh, showcasing that. You can check that out if you'd like. Um, it was quite interesting. It was an interesting test to run, interesting test to do. But yeah, we are going forward here installing everything um, like i said i started with the four stage bulk reef supply RL unit and again i will link that in the description below 
and I will also link the upgrades I did to it. You know, I, we've done the 150 gallon per day upgrade. I have a TDS meter on there. I will link the separate canisters I am using. And an RO unit at first will seem very complicated because it just seems like a bunch of tubing. Uh, in reality, it's, it's not. It's one of the most simple sets of filtration that you can use. And it's a kind of a cornerstone for a successful reef tank, you know, a saltwater tank. Um, what this is allowing me to do is I am generating my own RO water at home versus having to go to my local fish store and buy it, travel, you know, bring it home. This way I can monitor the TDS that it's producing. So the, the goal of this is you may, I may start with around like 150 TDS at my tap, but then as it filters out, I am hoping to bring that down to a zero TDS. And then as you add in your salt mix, you're going to be generating back into the nutrients that you actually want in your salt water uh, versus dealing with, you know, the, the crud we're filtering out. Um, you can use an RO unit to produce the RO water for a freshwater tank if you need a low pH. There are some specific fish that you'll breed in very low pH settings. But you know, it's, it's a very specific application. And as I am continuing to run the tubing around here and actually connecting each part of the filter, uh, we will talk about that more as this progresses. And I will explain the stages that this actually works. So right now, it looks like a jumbled mess of tubing some canisters, you know, it is, there's not, it looks very confusing, but once you understand it, it, again, it's very simple to set up. I will link in the description below uh, numerous videos to the Bulk Reef Supplies YouTube channel. They do an excellent job, way better than I can ever dream of, of actually explaining the stages of the RO system, how an RO system works, and how you can get one installed in your own home. Uh, but this is, again, this is my goal here to show you really how simple this is to install. Everything is quarter inch push connect RO tubing. All of the fittings are push connect. Uh, it's, it's not complicated. So it looks complicated just because things are kind of running in a, in a backwards order, but it will make sense once I get all the filters on there and we actually start applying that. But Bull Creek Supply does an excellent job of showcasing this. But again, my goal for tonight's video is really to show you how simple this can be in installing an RO unit. You know, this all in all took me maybe 30 minutes. And that was just as I'm, you know, stopping, make sure I'm connecting everything right. I actually had to source back to Bull Creek Supply, make sure I connected my are all membranes correctly, but all in all, it, it, the, end, the end result of this is if I can do this, you can do this. So now let's actually get into the stages of filtration that we are going to be doing for this. The first filter there is a sediment filter, and I, I buy, all of my filtration products for this setup from Bull Creek Supply. And I will link individual links to each of these stages of filtration I'm using, but they also offer a package deal. So the first one's a sediment filter. That's gonna take out you know, the, the, the floaties in the water, have you, anything that's gonna come through your pipes. And then the next two stages of filtration are going to be carbon blocks. Now I like the universal carbon blocks from Bull Creek Supply for the fact that they not only take out the chlorine, but they can also take out chloramines. You can Google and look into your city's uh, records and find out exactly what's in your water. Fortunately, I don't deal with chloramine in my water, but just to be on the safe side, I use the universal block so I never have to question that or worry about that. And when I decided to expand these uh, stages of filtration on my RL unit, 
I knew that I wanted to go to two carbon blocks. Uh, my sediment filter has never gotten extremely dirty. Um, you, you can ultimately expand this out to as many stages as you want. And some people will run you know, two to three sediment filters just to make sure that no potential visible solids or anything coming out of the pipe is gonna run through the filter. Uh, I'm, I'm satisfied with one, but like I said, I was more focused on really making sure that I was taking out all the chlorine and the chloramines in my water. And since I'm in a new kind of water area, I really wanted to start with a completely fresh um, filtration setup. And that's why I am starting with brand new uh, filter additives on everything. So after it goes through the chlorine, the excuse me, the carbon blocks, it will move up into the actual RO membranes. And from there, you, know, you can produce very solid uh, RO water. But what I'm going to be doing is after it passes through the RO membranes, it's going to pass through these two canisters of this DI resin. And unfortunately there, when I opened the first bag, it exploded like a bag of Skittles everywhere. It was a mess. Um, this DI resin is, is awesome stuff. I prefer a color changing resin. And this is kind of, the way that I describe it and I finally understood how this works is it's a final polishing filter for the water that's produced through the RO membrane. So after the, some water has been rejected, you have your wastewater, you also have your product water, your RO water. And once it passes through this DI resin, it's that final polishing stage to truly make sure that we're starting with a good baseline water. Uh, it, it is a color changing resin. So what I like about it is it, uh, it changes color as it's used up. And that way you can actually track to see at what point do you need to exchange that resin out. And I wanted to use two canisters of the resin so that when the first one will burn out faster, in theory, I can move the second canister up and supply a new bag of resin for the set, then the second canister and kind of continue that cycle uh, to hopefully not use as much, but always make sure that I'm maintaining a proper, proper water. You know, really want to make sure I'm getting the, the, the best out of my filtration unit. Um, I will also link a video in the description below based on that DI resin, but I want to get into you now, you know, how this, the stages of this work. Right, so we have everything set up. Here's our water source connection we've gone over in the previous video. So we're feeding water to the unit. It's regular tap water. So stage one of the filtration is going to enter into the sediment, sediment block there, the sediment filter. It's then gonna move over to the first carbon block. From there, it'll move to the second carbon block then it's pushed up into the RO membranes up top. Um, initially, this filter came with one, which would allow me to produce 75 gallons per day. But by adding the second RO membrane, I can produce now 150 gallons per day. And I actually have less wastewater because it's more efficient. So from there, you're going to get your rejected water. The wastewater line there is I run down to the floor drain. And then the other part of that is going to be the actual, what we call the product water. So the true RO water that's coming from there. And this is where it gets slightly confusing is that it runs over to the first stage of DI resin. From there, it goes over to the second stage of DI resin. And that is where the final product water is produced. Um, I added just a very temporary piece of RO tubing to the end of there in a future video we are going to build a water station in the section there and everything will make sense of why i chose this space and i'm using this space uh, another upgrade that i did on my ro filter is a tds meter so again the tds stands for total dissolved solids and this meter will read the amount of total dissolved solids coming out of my tap so what's coming into the filter. 
If I switch it, it'll also read the total dissolved solids once it passes through the RO membrane. That's going to show me if I'm, again, producing the zero TDS water that I, I want. You know, that will give us the perfect baseline layer. But again, guys, I appreciate you for joining me on this video. If you haven't already, subscribe. It's going to get interesting. It'll be great here as we are going to be building out the water station next and kind of tying in what we're going to do with our product water. You know, once we make water, what are we going to do with it? How are we going to store it? So it's as I'm waiting to build out my fish room again, this was a, a project I could get started. It's going to ultimately lead into the saltwater build. But the goal is to have great success from day one, and this will be the way to do it. So guys, if you like this video, thank you for sticking around. If you, you know, sat through almost 20 minutes of me talking, hit the subscribe button. It shows me a lot of support, and I really appreciate it. I look forward to doing this more for you guys and bringing you more content. So again, thank you so much, and we'll see you guys on the next one.